Within children's literature, there are few characters so compelling that they are recognized the world over and have the ability to define a specific place for generations of readers. We find one such character in Heidi, the little orphan girl who lives with her grandfather in the Swiss Alps. The evocative landscape setting combined with the protagonist's exuberance and positive spirit have cemented Heidi's status as a classic children's novel. Written by Johanna Spiri, the story of Heidi was initially released in two volumes, the first of which was published in 1880. It was an immediate success among readers in Switzerland and Germany, but before long, Heidi was translated into more than 50 languages and adapted for numerous film and TV productions worldwide. Most notably, Heidi's popularity in Japan, especially with regard to several animated series there, brought further international acclaim. However, in this video, we'll be focusing on five live-action adaptations that are still readily available. This is Heidi by the book. It didn't take long for Hollywood film producers to be inspired by the story of Heidi, with the first sound film adaptation featuring Shirley Temple at the height of her career. In keeping with her image, a musical number was written into the screenplay as part of a fantasy sequence. Other unexpected additions to the story include a convoluted kidnapping subplot in which Clara's housekeeper, Fraulein Rottenmeier, tries to sell Heidi to gypsies. You'll never see your grandfather oh, again. Oh, come on. I... Meanwhile, Heidi's grandfather journeys to Frankfurt, gets arrested while looking for Heidi, breaks out of jail, and rescues her from Rottenmeier, all of which is not in the book. The film leaves out various characters and storylines to focus even more on Heidi and further enhance her abilities. Showing Heidi alone helping Clara to walk bypasses the entire latter half of the book and also minimizes the role of the mountains, grandfather's support, and even Peter's friendship. Nonetheless, this loose adaptation of Heidi was a box office hit. The movie was entirely shot in the United States, but still promoted the pastoral beauty of Switzerland as well as the power of goodness and optimism. The 1968 NBC television film took the plot changes a step further, considerably altering the story through the characters' relationships. In the book, Heidi's aunt, Dita, finds a good job in the city of Frankfurt and isn't able to take five-year-old Heidi with her. In this version, Dita is simply getting married. A good man. A man of strong convictions. He wants to have a family with He's not prepared to accept a child which is not his own. That makes a problem for Heidi, doesn't it? In a major departure from the book, Heidi is also Sesamon's niece, making her and Clara cousins. But because Sesamon is away, Dita has to take Heidi to the grandfather first. Actually, it's a new character, the priest, who has to accompany and then leave Heidi with a family member who apparently wants nothing to do with her. The updated story also necessitates a change to many of the secondary characters. In the book, Fraulein Rottenmeier had disapproved of Heidi as a companion for Clara, but now she is their governess, and a kind, sympathetic one at that. Her updated role seems to replace the character of Clara's grandmother, allowing more time to develop the romance between Rottenmeier and Sesamon instead. Another subplot involves Heidi's grandfather, this time revealing his past as a church organist, and the tragic events that caused him to withdraw from society in the first place. Overall, the additions and modifications to the story make this version of Heidi feel more like a spin-off of The Sound of Music. However, some scenes remind us that it is still Heidi's story, and it is her positive attitude in the face of adversity that changes the lives of her family and friends.
This two-part television miniseries reimagines Heidi into a family drama with a dose of realism to prevent it from being too sentimental. This meant adding another layer to Heidi's backstory. In the book, it's explained that Heidi's grandfather had once been the owner of a large farm, but gambled away his property. He disappears for years and eventually returns with a son, who later marries Dita's sister, Adelheid. Two years later, he has an accident at work, and Adelheid dies of grief shortly after, leaving behind their only daughter, Heidi. Things are quite different in the TV series, wherein we see that Heidi's parents' demise was indirectly caused by her grandfather himself. Dita is much more opportunistic and combative than she is originally described. The series shows Heidi being a few years older when she is taken to live with her grandfather, making her less of a carefree child than a perceptive orphan who is keenly aware of her situation. I really won't be in trouble because I can pretty much take care of myself. I mean, it's not like I'm a baby or anything. I'm nine. Well, eight anyway. Whether she is dealing with emotionally distant and manipulative relatives or friends, Heidi maintains her composure until the end, with one final conflict resulting in Clara learning to walk and Heidi finally being accepted by her grandfather. The 2005 adaptation adheres more to the storyline, but alters many of the details and minor plot points. The script introduces new, oftentimes dramatic dialogue in an attempt to flesh out the characters. Its portrayal of Grandfather, Dita, and Rottenmeier more closely resembles the other screen adaptations rather than their book counterparts. This film does dedicate more screen time to secondary characters like Sebastian, Tinette, Grandmama, and the Doctor. It also depicts a Clara who is sweet and sensitive, similar to how she is described in the books. However, this British adaptation puts less emphasis on the Swiss and German setting, resorting to a generic mountain backdrop and vaguely 19th century European stereotypes. The majority of the film focuses on Heidi's time spent with Clara in the city. In the last quarter of the film, Heidi returns to the mountains and Clara comes to visit. Like the previous adaptation, the film accelerates Clara's recovery by having Heidi nearly fall off a cliff. Careful, Heidi! There me. No! Despite being more somber and a bit harsh at times, the film still reminds viewers to hold on to hope. Filmed on location in Germany and the Swiss Alps, the Swiss family film features stunning cinematography of beautiful landscape scenes, conveying both Heidi's vivacity and love of the mountains. In addition to being more true to the story, the film incorporates realistic nuances to the characters without making them cartoonish. A subtle sense of humor and more balanced characters keeps the movie entertaining without being too saccharine. However, this adaptation does continue the trend of portraying Grandfather as being neglectful and even uncaring to a tidy, but only at the beginning. In the book, while he was gruff and intimidating to others, he is kind and considerate to Heidi from the start. He never tries to get rid of her or scare her away. The actress portraying Heidi looks just as she is described in the book, with short, curly, dark hair, perfectly juxtaposed with Clara, who is described to have fair hair and blue eyes. It is implied in the film that Clara loses the ability to walk after the death of her mother, but while staying in the mountains, she is shown regaining her strength and happiness. Yes! You've done it! <laughs> Johannes Spuri described Heidi as a story for children and those who love children. This is reflected in her writing, which is descriptive and poetic, not overly simple linguistically or intellectually. 
even as Heidi's story depicts an idealized version of life in the past, it still resonates with anyone who has dealt with physical or emotional limitations, with loneliness and loss. The book especially emphasizes faith, prayer, and reliance on God, elements that guide the story and play a large role in Heidi's disposition as well as her decisions. Both children and adults can appreciate this story's timeless messages of altruism and friendship, the power of nature, and the appeal of a simple life.